Hi, I'm Andrew Cornelius. I love food, and I'm feeling a little hungry. Got plenty of recipes to choose from here. I just, no, I don't have any ingredients for that. All right. Did someone take my olive oil? Okay, no, it's not in there either. Okay, that fish is from six years ago. Nope, no, no. <laughs> I can't be bothered with this. Nah, I should go out and just eat it. I'm in downtown New Haven on Crown Street. I'm in the mood for soul food, yet Cuban food. In that case, it's gotta be Soul to Cuba Cafe. It's like actually visiting Havana without even spending that much amount of money. Food is really great here. It has a variety of everything. It also smells really good from outside. And I'm Michael Yamele, the general manager of Sol de Cuba Cafe, New Haven, Connecticut. If, if somebody's not familiar with Cuban culture and Cuban cooking, how would you, you describe the flavor profiles of Cuban food? Cuban food is a very approachable cuisine. It starts with garlic, citrus, it's a lot of savory, palatable flavors. A lot of people have this idea that Cuban food is spicy, but it's really not. It's garlic and citrus based. All right, so it's the weekend and I'm looking for a mojito. Can I get a classic mojito? Yes, of course. Okay, what if I wanted it with coconut? I can do it. Negroni mojito? Yes. Lemon mojito? Absolutely. Passion fruit mojito? Uh-huh. Mango mojito? That's right. Guava mojito? Guava. How, what if I want one aged to perfection? I've got the uh, mojito viejo for you. Anything else? I think that's perfect. Eight mojitos, please. <laughs> Tuesday night was mojito night. And you would get a card, you would get it checked off according to the mojitos you had. And I won the trip to Cancun. I had the most cards. That was absolutely fabulous. So what if I need like a, a caffeine kick instead of a mojito? We have a great Cuban bean espresso. We take the beans in green, roast them right here in Connecticut to our specs, and you can't have another coffee like it. So if I'm coming in for lunch or dinner, what are uh, some of the uh, favorites of the customers? For lunch, there's the Cuban sandwich. I love the Cubano. I like mine with all the meat and lots of cheese. It's very traditional. And there's even a debate in South Florida about who had it first, Ybor City or Miami. And it's Ybor City. Take that, Miami. Ybor City. Let's make a Cuban sandwich. All right. This is just a pork butt. You can use pork shoulder or pork butt. So here's the traditional Cuban marinade. It's called mojo. It comes from a Portuguese word, mojo. It means sauce. The Cuban mojo is this. We have a white vinegar. Right. This is actually juice from bitter orange, the Seville orange. You don't have to use it. It's something that we like to use to get that authentic flavor. We put uh, just a white salt. We use uh, kosher salt. Some oregano. That's gonna really enhance the flavor as it cooks. We have some minced garlic. You can use a mortar and pestle to get it to this state, or you can just chop it. This is a long cook um, item. We cook our pork overnight. I just wanna make sure I got that right. You cook it overnight? We do, yes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, we're cooking about uh, 15, 20 pounds at a time. We'll squeeze in some fresh lime juice. And then the last thing is just a little bit of olive oil. You wanna use a nice quality olive oil and just put a little bit for flavor. Mm -hmm. Getting our pork butt ready for the oven. You wanna awesome. use all that juice. We're gonna close this in in aluminum foil. Well, you've had that, that real dry uh, pork that a lot of people are making <laughs> in their house is because you're cooking at a too high a temperature. I think, I think the, Michael's been to my house. He's had my pork loin before. <laughs> Let's throw it in the oven then. Okay. What you want is to be able to take a spoon and just move it right through the meat. It'll just right. fall right If apart. it gives up on a spoon, that's how you know. That's it. Goodbye, pork butt. See you tomorrow. We have a Cuban bread. It's a nice, light, flaky white bread. Just mayonnaise and mustard on ours. Just, those are some of the two best uh, toppings for a sandwich. The Cuban roast pork goes on next. Okay. And this is the pork that we just showed you the marinade for. Followed next by salami. This is a, a Genoa salami. Uh, ham, we use a smoked ham. I believe this one is a Virginia ham. Swiss cheese. Oh, look at that. And we put pickles. That is the finishing touch. Now we take that sandwich and put it in the plancha or the sandwich press until the cheese starts bubbling out the sides. Oh, so what's going in the fryer over there? And we're putting on some sweet plantains for you to try, too. I thought those were bananas. 
They are similar to banana. It is a type of banana. A shot of the press. It looks like it's a, a little smooshed now, but I can see that it's got like a toasty layer right there on top. It's like you described, the key indicator, that bubbling cheese. There we go, we know it's ready. And you'll hear the crunch probably here. Got your roast pork, salami, ham, Swiss cheese, and pickles. Three meats, one cheese, one pickles, and then the sauce of mustard and mayonnaise on that bread. That's all you need. Oof, I can't <laughs> wait. All right, so I didn't even have to go far from New Haven to get a classic Cubano right here. It's as we saw it before, that bread is now pressed down into magnificence. You get the layer of pickle, the layer of Swiss cheese, three meats, including that pork that takes 24 hours to cook. Oh boy. Mm. That is a tasty sandwich. All right, call me a little greedy, but I'm gonna reach in here and take an isolated bite of that pork. Oh, all those flavors and seasonings in one bite, pretty tasty. Over here on the side, it's not bananas, it's fried plantains. Mm. They have some sweetness to them, kind of like a banana, but still they have more of a starch than what a typical banana would have. Nice fried outer edge, oh, this makes for an excellent side dish. Super good, I like it, I'll probably get it again. If you really want a Cuban experience, this is the place to come. It's very cool, I would say just come and see for yourself. So for New Haven's best sole Cuban food, it's gotta be sold to Cuba Cafe. Buena provecha, or as I say, just eat it.